What's going on everybody, in this episode we're going to cover everything we can about the fallback property for get static paths. This is a very important property to understand and as you can see from our code, this is going to be returned in an object from get static paths. In the previous video we introduced this function so definitely check it out if you need the foundation. But one thing we return is the fallback and we had it set to false. What this means is when we request data and it doesn't exist in the Next.js cache, we just 404, which is the simplest way to get started. However, it's not really ideal because we could be requesting data that's been added to the database. So let's go ahead and talk about the different cases of what could be expected. And don't feel bad if you have to go through this video a few times because there's a lot of different options. What exactly do I mean? Well, for example, you could request data that is in the database. You could request data that's been added to the database after build time. You could request data that actually is not in the database at all and it wasn't added after build time. And there's even more because you can set Next.js up so that it will check for new data on some interval. So those are the different things we're going to cover in this video and we'll be talking about the interval part revalidate in the next episode. We got a taste of that in the previous episode, but we're gonna see it again in the following episode. So to start, let's talk about what's going on right now, and then we'll see how this works inside a dev mode. Currently, we're getting all of our customers and we are using a map function, which will return an array of all of the IDs inside of this params property of an object. Complex way of setting it up, but this is what's required for the paths property that's being returned. The important thing to understand is that when you are in dev mode by saying npm run dev, this get static paths is going to execute on every single request. So, what that means is when we do a refresh, it's going to get the latest data from the database, and you can see all of that information right here. This is very different than if you actually build the application with npm run build followed by npm run start. Now our application is live, we can refresh, but you can see we're not requesting any new data here. What this means is that if we add something to the database, let's go ahead and add a new customer, test and test, we will save. This is customer ID 22 in our case. We will go into our customers and we can do a refresh and you can see that information is not shown here. And if we access that page directly, customers 22 we're getting a 404 so where we pass in the id directly this is associated with the page that we're working on now and the problem is at build time that id was not part of this map so when we requested that data later which ids to select from was already determined and that's why we get a 404 setting fallback to true instead of false will allow us to fix this problem. And if you do this inside a dev mode, it's going to work just fine. So we'll say npm run dev, things are up and running, and we can now go back to our customer list. And let's add a customer, we'll say, we'll call it test two, and save. We can take this new test two data, which is ID 23, and we can pass that to our page. So 23 and the information shows up. However, we're not going to get that same behavior inside of production mode because with dev mode, this is executed ahead of time for each request and that customer data is put into the page statically, meaning all of this text can be seen in the page source. So you can see customer test two right there. However, if we do this in production, it's not actually even going to build npm run build, you will get a compilation error. You can see this is our error. You can read through that if you wish, but the summary of this problem is that with fallback being true in production, what will happen is instead of get static paths being executed on every request, it'll get executed just on build. And then if we request some ID that has not been added to that path list, say ID 200, it will then make a request dynamically to see if that information is in the database. The problem though, is that's not going to be static and ready to go. So when we try to execute customer props.customer.name on initial page load, this information is not going to be there and it's going to cause a runtime error. So Next.js is smart enough to realize that 
and as a result requires you to build a case of what if the customer is not found while fallback is set to true. So what that means is inside of this, we can check to see if customer is found. And the way you do that is by using use router and saying if router dot is fallback. This will be true when we request some data that is not in that pre-populated paths array. So what do we do if this is the case? Well, we'll just alter our return such as, well, we should probably not scream. So let's just go ahead and just return a paragraph saying loading. Now we should be able to compile our code with npm run build. It appears to have worked. So let's go ahead and say npm run start. And now we have our application running and let's go ahead and go through an example. So we will go to our customer list and our highest ID here is 23. Let's go through the example where after build, we added a customer and then we request that customer's data by passing in ID 24, which will be the new ID. This will show what happens when we request data that was added after build time. So let's go to our customer list and we'll add one here. We'll just call this test ID 24. Hopefully I got that number right and we will save. Now check this out. We'll go into here and you can see I was right. The ID is in fact 24. So we should now be able to pass in 24 to our URL hitting enter. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a very quick flash saying loading dot dot dot. If you need, go back and watch the video in half speed. And that's an important thing to realize because I actually hit that case where router is fallback was true and it returned loading. Once that data was retrieved, it was then able to display props.customer.name. So that was really our first possibility, adding data after the code has been built. The next thing is what if we're requesting data that could have been added after build time, but actually isn't. So we would just request some bogus ID, say 200. Next.js will know that we want to check the database for that because it could have been added after build time, but in our case, it's not going to be there. So then what happens? So let's test this out by passing in some ID such as 200 and we get a client error. So this is a runtime error, application error, a client side exception has occurred. See the browser console for more information. So opening up the dev tools, we can see a bunch of errors going on here. And it says failed to load static props. So in this situation, the problem is actually with our get static props because we are now using an ID to access a customer that doesn't exist. And we're not able to access result.data.customer. The fix for this is there's actually a property for get static props that can be returned which is not found. So what we can do is we can make a case to see if the data was found and if it's not set not found to true. So we're not going to want to do it in this return, you see, because that's if the data was actually found, so not found would be false. So instead, you might do something like this, which isn't going to be quite right in my situation, but depending on how you're requesting the data, this might do the trick. So we could say if result.data with an exclamation mark. So if result.data evaluates to false, say result.data doesn't exist or evaluates to false, then we would return a new object with not found being true. And then if we get past this down to line 43, then we know it's good. So we can just return the customer data. This isn't going to quite work for me because Axios is actually throwing an exception before it ever gets down to line 38. So I'll rearrange this functionality as a try catch. So it'll look like this, try and then catch. And we will define an error parameter here. Now, if everything's good, then we will just return this here. So I'll cut that and move it inside of the try. There we go. And then if we have an error, I will return not found being true. So it'll look like this. And then we can remove that old code there, save and do a little bit of a reformatting. And this is our new structure. This ain't perfect though, because basically now what's gonna happen is we get any error at all, we're just gonna say, hey, the data is not found. You know, even if the database exploded, which 
I guess in that scenario, it wouldn't be found. But, you know, we want to be a little bit more aware of what's going on. So what we can do is we can check the error type. Now, my first initial thought was to type this to Axios error, which is something that we can import. So update import Axios error. But we get a problem, catch clause variable type annotation must be any or unknown if specified, which I didn't exactly know what to do with that and I didn't want to use any. So instead what I did is I just still use the Axios error, but just kept this untyped in the parameter definition and checked the type down here inside of the catch block. So if error instance of Axios error then what we can do is we can return different things based on the status code. So let's check the status code and you can do that with saying if error dot response dot status being equal to 404, then what we will do is we will return not found, which now it's a little bit more specific to if we get a 404 response versus some other response such as unauthorized. Now, even with all this additional effort, TypeScript is still going to freak the crap out. So what are we going to do with all this junk down here? Well, the problem is we currently are not returning anything if we get down into the catch, but it's not an instance of Axios error or it's not a 404. So you can build out more cases. Or what I'm going to do is if we get into the catch and this if is not evaluated to true, then I'm going to return an object with the props being an empty object. Ah, we're getting closer. TypeScript still spazzing out. So the solution now is to say the props that the component is expecting, which is a customer, can be undefined if we allow it. So in that situation, if get static props returns this, the customer is going to be undefined. So what we need to do is now do a ternary here to see if it is defined. So props.customer, if so, props.customer.name, otherwise null. Very similar pattern to what we've been doing this entire series. And my golly, I think we finally got our problems to go away. So now let's try this out. What we'll do is we'll close out and we'll say npm run build and npm run start. Now, if we try an ID that doesn't exist, we will get the loading briefly and then we will get a 404. And now if we revisit this page again, you can see that this is a cache hit. So that is a quick overview of fallback and the different possibilities. What we're going to talk about in the next video is lazy caching. So instead of caching everything up front, how can we just cache things as they're requested? And we're going to talk about that revalidate option to occasionally check for new updated data. Stay tuned. I think that video will be fun and hopefully you've been enjoying the content. If so, would appreciate the subscribe. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.